So here's our question. What is mannerism? Well, we can start to answer that with this painting as our case study. Our example of what mannerism is and does that is so different from high Renaissance art, like Raphael's School of Athens. My personal definition of mannerism, I've taken from the Elton John song, Benny and the Jets, and his line is the weird and the wonderful. The song celebrates the weird and the wonderful. And if you look closely at this painting, it is truly an example of the weird and the wonderful, which mannerism loves. So notice that the artist is Pontormo, and the subject matter that's used as a title is either a descent from the cross or an entombment of Christ. The or is significant. We're not quite sure what this even represents. And that should already tip you off to a dramatic change. Historia has disappeared. There is a kind of a story hidden somewhere in this, but you really can't perceive it clearly. Instead, you get drawn into the fascinatingly strange world of the artwork. So there are all these complicated parts, but they do not cohere into a logical unified system. Look how clear and logically placed everything is. That's not happening here. You've got the body of Jesus. You've got the Virgin Mary reaching out in grief. But what's happening, these people are carrying Jesus, but it's sort of the most ridiculous way. This guy is squatting like a ballet dancer on his tippy toes, curving forward while carrying the weight of Jesus's dead body. I mean, he's gonna have to go to the chiropractor. And why is he wearing this strange modern dance unitard? Everyone's in pink and blue. There is a dance-like quality because everything is very artificial. It's the word art and the word artifice have the same root, which is made by human hands. In the high Renaissance, the idea was to create an incredibly natural vision, but an idealized nature. This is unnatural to be in these positions. The Virgin Mary reaching out her hands it's not a natural way of showing grief. It's more like a pantomime in some old fashioned theater. It's unnatural for this woman to be up here at the top with her neck craned forward and this woman's neck craned forward. Now notice that the Renaissance pyramid, that all important compositional element to create stability and order, it's shattered. There is no stability or unity whatsoever. The figures are jumbled in an undefined space. We don't even have our linear perspective, no orthogonals, no vanishing point. It's all a kind of confusion of strangeness. This is significant. All the hard-won methods for creating rational space, articulate bodies, physical and psychological credibility, all of that is washed away and we have an enigma. So the word mannerism is derived from the Italian word maniera, which means style and also stylishness. And this is a kind of art that celebrates artificioso, the artificial. This is a compliment. We're used to a world where some, saying something is natural, you know, a natural food is better than an artificial food. But in this case, artificial means something you've stylishly invented. This was a time when something has changed in painting, where a concept, a curious invention is becoming valued more than just the straightforward representation of nature. So this love of an ingenious trick, a marvelously innovative idea, what was called at the time a concetto or concept or conceit, this actually started with Michelangelo. So his figura serpentina is in a sense the seed that leads to the plant of mannerism. The figura serpentina is the idea that the, he's got a concept 
for the figure. Not just that it will be beautiful and anatomically correct and harmoniously proportioned, but that it will actually have a serpentine twisting form. And so the figure is sort of illogical because honestly, nobody picks up their book of prophecies by making this position. And yet it's extraordinarily beautiful. And the very artifice, meaning the the artfulness of coming up with this idea of the toes so exquisitely poised and the body seeming to spin on those slender, tiny little toes, this monumental body. This is a kind of turning in the value of art from nature, celebrating nature, towards celebrating the artfulness of art. And you see clearly how Michelangelo's twisting complexity has inspired Pontormo, right? Down to the toes, down to the little ungulate version of the, of the toes split like that. And again, it's about a movement that is unnatural, but who cares? It's more beautiful than nature. It's eye-catching. It's surprising. This is the mannerist spirit. So Correggio's ceiling painting, Assumption of the Virgin, which is painted at the Parma Cathedral, is another example of these kinds of values. So Correggio basically abandons the job of clearly telling a story. The story here is supposed to be the Virgin Mary on her death is brought up into heaven. That's what Assumption means. She's raised up to heaven. But look at you can hardly tell what's going on because she looks like some kind of little bumblebee caught in a whirlwind she is you know sort of like a bee that's lost control of her flight patterns she's actually awkwardly and even embarrassingly tumbling in the air because it's like her bum is the first thing we see there's a way in which high renaissance decorum is disappearing here so that the artist can create a kind of overwhelming sense of the whirlwind of the rise into heaven and he's fascinated with his own conception of that as a kind of tornado swirl of bodies and so Correggio is carrying on this the tradition of the illusionistic fantastic painted ceiling that began with Mantegna and Mantegna was certainly surprising, unexpected, delightful invention or invenzioni in Italian. But this is now to the point where it's just overwhelming and bizarre. You can't make sense of it. You can't even make out the figures. There's so much going on. The movement is so exaggerated. And importantly, the sense of infinite space. This is a very mannerist idea. The space is clearly mapped out here in Mantegna with excellent linear perspective done from below with very skillful precision and mathematical ratios. This kind of feeling of looking up into infinity is, does not feel like a, an experience of the rational or the clear, which are so prized in the high Renaissance, but a kind of emotional, confusing, overwhelming experience. This is very different than what we've been looking at.